nothing but a heartbreak. Ain't nothing but a mistake. I like it. I don't know. I never wanted to <laughs> be <laughs> sick. <laughs> We're back, episode 11. We are. Episode 11. 11. Wow. Who would have thought we would have made it? We didn't made quit it. at three. Really? I know. You know, usually you quit, I quit far before yeah. I should in yeah. most things. I'm like, episode yeah, I'm done with this. Yeah. But accountability. You think, you think we'll make it to 100? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you did not it. sound very confident. <laughs> yeah, that was the least confident. <laughs> yeah. You think we'll get to episode 100? Uh, yeah. I no, think you guys over will two get years. There. That's I think over two years. Will. I think y'all will get there. That's where a lot of creators say that episode 100 is where you're like, that's, that's where, where real everyone... creativity starts. Wow. Well, that's where the momentum really <laughs> compounds. But uh, I do, yes. I do feel like we have something special. <laughs> yes, in a, in a way. Just what I'm saying, we're going to defy the odds. <laughs> what I'm saying is we've been creating content in other circles for a okay. long time. Mm. And we're compounding on that just now making video content. Huh. Yeah. So Do we, you guys think bring... we'll make it to 100? Drop a we comment. Drop a oh, comment. Drop, a comment. <laughs> drop, <laughs> drop the number that we will drop off at. Yes. Well, like yeah. yes. What's the drop off <laughs> number? The over under. Somebody's like, I was hoping it was 11. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> there's, a, uh, there's a musical artist. Um, I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it's like Michael W. Smith, actually. But mm. he said mm. that you don't start writing good songs until you've written like, I, it was literally like 3,000 songs. Oh, wow. You must not have gotten to 3,000. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Take that, Michael. <laughs> We're firing. It. Episode 11 on live Yay! something. It's tag the him. afternoon, not the morning. Tag him in this video. <laughs> we accidentally tag our presbytery. <laughs> Michael Smith. <laughs> Michael Smith. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know, dude. I, I, I'm, I was a big Michael W. Smith fan back in the day. So big I time. really liked his, <laughs> this is true, his <laughs> instrumental one. <laughs> really? His, yeah. Just I thought the that piano was like, stuff. Yeah, I thought it was really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, that was a cheap shot at Michael W. Smith. Sorry, it was, Doug. it was. Yeah, three thousand songs though. I'm like, yeah. I've only written, I don't know, maybe like 30, 40. It Explains why we only have one or two Northwood worship albums. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Hey, no. hey. Easy. Hey. I'm kidding. I'm Easy. kidding. We've Come got on. true worshippers yes. living the good life. Okay, so yep. three. We've got true worshippers <laughs> wait for the moment. Ooh. New wave. We've way. got Northwood worship. New wave. Yep. And Northwood worship. Who you are. Four. Quattro. That's f- probably about four 40 times songs. 20. 40 yeah. songs. Yeah, four right times there. 14. Yeah. I was a part of most of them, not all of them. No, they were good in their uh, time. Yeah. Really in their time. You know that, that I mean, this is going to be too early to get here, but <laughs> the question has come up why don't we write more? Why do we only have 40 underneath our yeah, yeah. belt? Somebody that- did ask that. They said, why don't. When like when do we decide to write more or something like that? So it's it's why doesn't Northwood make more of its own music? Is that not a direction that we want to go, or is it mm. more a decision to make a song when a good idea comes? Hmm. I It'd think be it's more the second. Yeah, but but also not the second at all because if you wait <laughs> for a good idea to come, you're never going <laughs> to write happens. anything. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's both and. Yeah, it's always been whenever we had the people who wanted to and could yeah. do do it. And Those two things work together. They need yes. to. They have you to. have to be able to write, and you have to have like a a, a um like a synergy with other people to write, and yeah. then you also have to have the ability and the people who have the resources in order to Execute. complete the whole process because yeah. it's a very very involved process. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. That's why because we can't. Yeah. It's really a good way to sum. Well, that it's up. funny because it's like okay, who you are. The way that that happened, um, a guy started coming to church and a really good producer and great songwriter. And um, so we got together, started hanging out. And, uh, you know, anyway, the song, um, the song Amber sang the first one. So, so, much, so much, more. much more. So, so much more. That was a bop. It was crazy. But the way that it happened, he's like, I got this idea. And so he plays it on his computer. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I get the, I got my guitar. I start playing it. And he um he was like, There's so much more and he sang that part and then he just went da da ba da 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 he did something like that. And I heard literally I heard the lyrics, like the ones mm. that are in the song. That's what I thought he said. And so I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, we, we go to the next line. 
<laughs> and it happened again. And I literally, we, we stopped and I came, I said, I said, okay, so right now, so much more, um, everything. I can't what I found in you is everything I needed. Yeah. And he was like, oh, dude, that's good. And I was like, that's what, that's what, I you, said, that's what you said. He's like, no. I was like, bro, I heard you literally say those words. He's like, no, I swear. I've never heard. I, that's. So anyway, it, I didn't that know that. Happened. Yeah, man, that <laughs> happened a few times. Yeah, and, I was there um, for one of them. Were you? It was magical. Yeah, we were at your house sitting on the couch. It was after some group or something. I forget the song, but same thing. He was like mumble rapping lyrics, and you're like, okay, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, that's well, not so, what I said. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, a witness. Verified. A witness. Verified. Yes. A witness. Wow. It was I'm weird. not crazy. We yeah. could almost call it a, a, a tongues, an interpretation of tongues, if you I was going to go there. We could stretch. We could hey. stretch. Us there. We could hey. stretch Actually, it. I mean, Chapter two. I've heard crazier things called. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> that actually makes way more sense. Absolutely. And it's verified. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, so it's basically when we write more songs, whenever uh, there's people and resources and it just makes sense. It's very difficult. Yeah. I think people don't understand how. How much work it actually takes, right? To do so that's it. why, like, whenever people talk about worship artists like making money off their music and it being a negative thing, I'm like, you do understand that, like, that's literally that's a career. Yeah, they've dedicated their life yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so then it's, it's gifts to the church that somebody has the ability. Yeah, and everything, and I think that they should it, just do real work. Like, no, like, yeah, they are doing mm-hmm. real work. It's really, yeah. yeah. Have you guys seen what's going on with AI and music and artists and all that good stuff? No, dude. Mm-hmm. So there's no, controversy. Um, where, dun, dun, dun. yeah, so somebody took Kanye's AI, AI model, his voice, and had him sing, Hey there, Delilah, and it sounds just like it. Whoa, so that was a big deal. And then somebody took Drake and T Pain and wrote a song as them and recorded it, and it sounds just like them. And so now artists are coming up and saying, Uh, I forgot who it was either Sony or Capital Music, I forget which one, but they requested Spotify and Apple to block bots from modeling artists' wow. voices. I'm going to try to play this. I don't know if it's going to go through and it might blow our ears off. So I turn the volume way down. Kanye singing, Hey there, Delilah. Oh, it's what you do to me. Oh, it's what you do to me. That's you. Oh, it's what you do to me. That's all AI. It's all AI. Holy smokes. Does Kanye sing like that? I've never heard him sing. He's, he's yeah, got he a sings decent great. voice, actually, for Kanye. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, that guy sounds great. That's all AI. Sounds great to me. That's Kanye. Dude. <clears throat> wow. There's also an Instagram that has been putting popular music and rewriting it as if it's worship songs. So really? this one, for instance, is if Adele played her songs in church. Absolutely. <laughs> I like that leg. That was a good leg. I'm going to drop a tear. So good. Yeah. There's another one. Let me find it. It's Backstreet Boys, I think. Oh. The church. Oh, this one's yes. so I, good. I, I heard this one. Come on, church. Let's go. Lift it up. <laughs> Lift it up. Raise your voice. Let me hear you say it. Come on. Every voice. Hey. I want it. I like it. I don't know. I never wanted to say it. I knew it was coming. That's what I was like, I had to. I feel like that's the Mike moment. Mike is like, I'm not going to do it. I was trying that's to loop Mike in, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't I go I got there. a cold right now. It's okay. I, it would have sounded better if I didn't have a cold. Oh, it sounded great. Thanks. It sounded great. It was great. Yeah. It's a joyful noise. A little raspy oh, tone. So that's popular right now. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it sounds bad as long as it's for the Lord, right? That's what it's I have to tell noise. myself every Sunday. Put <laughs> <laughs> myself up. <laughs> Those I like were the it, best man. ones. Yeah, there's like a couple it. of them. It's fun. Yeah, you just put a little four on the floor. Absolutely, man. A little, little bit of a sound. What is four thing on the floor? There. Kick drum, quarter notes. Okay. Four on the floor. On the floor. I like four it. Four on the floor. Yeah. Yep. Now you're a worship drummer. There Congratulations. That's Dude, all you got to know. All the drum, bro. Okay, so I, I, I played a whole lot of drums growing up, obviously, in church. And then I didn't play for a long time. And then a few years ago, I started playing more. And I realized how many of the church songs, drum wise, it's all the same thing. Every single it's still like, like today oh, as dude. when it was. I feel like no, it's no, 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 no. In the last like ten years, yeah. all the drums, all say, the church drums, is the same. It's like Tom to Tom, 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 Snare, Tom yeah. to Tom, 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 Snare and cymbal. 
and then build the movie. Every bridge one, you drop out. Yeah. Bridge two, you build a little bridge bit. Dude, what, what happened to three? the instrumentals? I agree, dude. Like, everybody all the way in, guitar maybe riffing. People are just singing like, yeah. Dude, I lived with, I riffed so hard back in the day. You those are the those moments, moments I lived for. Like this really? is my praise mm. unto you, was Jesus. Was it praise unto the and Lord? Then they took or it all away. Or is it? Was it? Most of the times, times I can oh. honestly say it was for the Lord. Yeah. And it was always better when it was for the Lord. The times when you would try to riff for yourself, yeah. you didn't know what you were doing. Mm. I always messed it up. Yeah. Yep. Now I feel it, man. Let's continue to talk about worship. Might as well, I love it. Might as well keep talking yeah, about the theme. We got lots of questions about worship. All right. Ooh. Good podcast. So this is a long one. I'm going to read all of it, and then we can go from there. Perfect. <laughs> uh, what makes a song good for Sunday morning? Uh, there are plenty of great songs with good messages that aren't unbiblical, yet they would never make a Sunday morning lineup. Rock, rap, and electronic music don't seem to fit. Why is that, and should it be that way? Do you feel like this impacts your own music? He's a huge fan of I Got You and Look Back, but they don't. Be- uh, I don't believe I've ever heard either on a Sunday morning. Are they too upbeat? What yeah. makes a song good? Do you guys have any thoughts? Because obviously I have a lot of thoughts, yes, and I'm right. going to wait until we hear your thoughts. What makes a song good? I think content. Uh, I think biblical accuracy is is good for worship. Um, I think in worship, there's kind of a couple different routes. It can be like what God's done for me, or just straight up glorification, just exaltation of of God. Um, I think a lot of worship uh, has just a lot to do with style. Um, you know, and in different churches have different styles that follow leaders, but also just culture community that it's in so why would you think that rock rap or electronic music don't seem to make their way to a sunday morning lineup well i remember some worship songs that were a little bit more upbeat Mm -hmm. that had like spoken words broken into them yeah that like launched into worshipful moments and it was so it was an incorporation of the two some of that comes down to do you have the ability to pull it off Mm -hmm. uh some of it's just straight up style you know what works for the people that are here yeah i think a lot of it is what you said style and then having the ability to do it because uh, there's a lot of good ideas out there that not everybody can do. So I actually have a couple of thoughts on this written down. Uh, I shared this with some of our team that gets together, and we write the set list every month. And so I don't think I've actually shared this with you. So this is a good time no. to, to oh, share it. And yeah, see, like let me this. Learn. See what you think Pull about the curtain this. back maybe, a little bit. Maybe we've been doing it wrong the whole time. <laughs> this uh, is why I worship so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wondering it. what's going on. Song selection criteria or the way that we think through songs as we're picking songs to sing. So number one, obviously, is theological soundness. And a question that I asked to kind of help frame this up for me is what scriptures help tell the story of the song? Uh, so if there's not a lot of biblical verses that kind of validate this, that's a that's a big red flag for me of like, okay, we probably shouldn't sing this one a lot. Number two, engageability. And a question around this is can normal people sing this song? Right. Can people who aren't musicians walk in and sing this? Because we say it all the time. This isn't a performance or a concert. Uh, if it is, it's it's really poorly done. <laughs> this is about, <laughs> this is about singing that. worship. Uh, and so engageability is a big deal for us. Number three, playability. Can our teams lead this song well? Yeah. The melody, the harmonies, timing, chords. Uh, can we even do this? And then number four would be messaging. Is this a song of worship to or about God or an emotional anthem about me? And I think that's the big one that I catch a lot. No, I agree. Um, I think everything you just said is is the big boundaries of it. Um, I think, obviously, and you said it too, it's the content, is it theologically correct? There's, you know, and, and that's tough because <clears throat> there's some songs we sing right now. There might be a line in it for me personally that I'm like, that's on the that's line. True. That's a, that's a yeah. border That's a border statement. I agree with what it's saying, but some people have taken that line and they actually, sure. they're singing it like this over here. And so, you know, and I mean. Changing so lyrics. Yeah, we, we change some, lyrics yeah, sometimes. Some lyrics. Yeah, um, yeah, we do. Yeah, so we change lyrics because we don't agree with it sometimes. But uh, yeah, can people sing it? So obviously Sunday morning worship, it's so many people from so many different age ranges and styles and stuff like that. So we try to even stay in a kind of more of a, a safe thing. Um, but you said y'all were joking about rap and stuff like that. Like you can't even, you can't do it. Well, people can't sing rap first off. It's it, Whoever starts rapping, everybody stops and they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is fun. If it's like a fun environment, just like a, a hangout yeah. time and you can, I, I, I think you can rap about good things, and yeah. I think it can be worshipful. Yeah, it can I don't, be glorifying God. Yeah, I don't think that for a worship <clears throat> service, especially Sundays, it's just not the time, really, most of the time for, for us. But stylistically, yeah, can the band even play it? People yeah. have asked before, like, why don't we do more, like, um, uh, you know, gospel stuff and this and that? And for years, for me, the answer was always just because I can't play it, because I can't yeah. sing it and I can't play it. 
and nobody on our team can play it. Yeah. Like gospel musicians, they do it right. Like they're this guy's, breed, dude. Yeah. They're bass players. I love have to it. Be yeah. Tight. They're incredible. Oh, like I got so much respect. <laughs> We're not that good. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, we, we literally can't do yeah. it. Yeah. So it, sometimes it's just that. It's, Come on, it's John that Henley. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Dude, John would. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. kidding. John would kill it. I just shout out John. I to got do you. it like all the way. Yeah. Like drum. Yeah. Like you've got and, and then also you the same people really need to play a lot together to get to mm-hmm. that level of tightness. That's true. So that's and, why uh, it works in those environments. So I grew up playing a lot of those churches, and the reason it works is because you're playing with the same people f- for like <laughs> six to eight hours every week. Yep. And that helps you lock that tightness in. When you don't have that, yeah. it's impossible. Yeah. It's good. Dude, I like, I like that you brought up the song lines that we sing now are different. Because I want to talk about that. There was a song we were texting about the other day. I can't remember what it was. Uh, I think it was House of Miracles. Yeah, your blood flows through my veins. So there's even things like that. that Ooh. Even though you can take that and highly twist that. Um, but not doing that and still singing the song. There's another song that people have been asking about a ton, and I want to talk about it specifically, and now I can't remember it. Is it Gratitude? Gratitude. Gratitude. Because of the bridge. Gratitude. Dude, that What's song is so good. Like, the verse and the chorus are amazing, but then the bridge is something about a line inside, a line inside of you, come up and praise the Lord. And that's mm-hmm. not bad. Like, it's a great shower song, mm-hmm. and it's a great in-your-car song. But for everyone to come on a Sunday morning, and we all just sing together, Praise the Lord just feels weird. It feels very motivational. Yeah. So now it's I don't like, have to text everyone individually. <laughs> I'm gonna just send them a link to this. It's so clip. weird. Because yeah. it's like it's, it's not that you disagree. I love the song. It's like this psalm that says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within mm-hmm. me, bless his holy yeah. name. Yeah. It's it's the same approach. But um and we used to sing a song way back in the day, Bless the Lord, oh, oh. my soul. Classic. And oh. all that is within me. Is this the appropriate Bless time to sit four on the floor? <laughs> no, you gotta go. God. Oh yeah, that's the only way to play to him. Two on the floor. I can play that one. The Lord. <laughs> yes. But then you get real excited. Then you like double time it. <laughs> well, no, that's when you go up a key. Yeah, I was about to say. Uh, you gotta, okay, you jump the octave and then modulate, and mm. the spirit really falls. The uh, higher up you go, oh, the man. more the spirit. Yeah. Like, you get closer yeah, to God. Yes. It. <laughs> you get closer to God, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the chimes. The chimes. Dude, oh, sure. that's good chime. You hit him with a rainmaker. Yeah. Bless the Lord, on my soul. That's how we got there. Sorry. Yeah, Brandon Lake. I mean, stuck in my head now. Nothing wrong with it, but um, it's a great song. Some songs just feel weird, but dude, I've had. I think we said this a few weeks ago. I've had songs that were my favorite. Like, mm-hmm. dude, I'm listening to them nonstop in my yeah. car, all that kind of stuff. And then we would learn it and do it on a Sunday morning in the in the room, and it just fell flat. And it yep. was just that was a song maybe for me. Yeah, that really ministered to me. But doing it in a congregational setting, it just didn't. It didn't work, and I have no idea why, but it just didn't work. And so over time, you start learning kind of which songs may or may not work. But sometimes we're wrong about that. There's been times where people are like, we got to learn a song. we got to learn a song. We're like, oh, gosh, So let's talk about that. Waymaker is a specific song. uh, We did it this past Sunday. we fought that song at least a year, (laughs) I feel like. At least a year, like, no. Why did you fight it? Because of curiosity. So I don't like it purely mostly on style i yeah. feel like it's lazy yeah it's not written well the bridge is the same note the mm. entire i i don't like it it's just boring to me it's the as musical a musician. aspect yeah okay. musically it's stale is it just not fun to play so it's all the same notes they're all like literally you can play it like in one hand yep. so it's kind of boring that way so musically it's like ah eh. yep and then the bridge is the same exact thing but so for the normal person, it's in that one key that everybody can do it. And, and I think that's care. why it's fire every time we do it. Yeah. Dude, that it hit hits. Sunday. Easy. And I was like, oh, this this roof's going to blow off the yep. place. They were ready to go. And I sing it. Hey, look, I sing it with a lot of passion, and mm-hmm. I, I, I declare it and get to the bridge. But if you're just looking at it musically, yeah. it's it's pretty it's, it's pretty stale. It's okay, now one of my favorite songs to lead. Yeah, it's I'll great say to that. Me. Musically, what's your favorite? The I want to hear that. Musically, something that we do, what is something that you really enjoy just playing on a total selfish level? What's fun to play that we do? So I, I'm a big fan of songs like uh, We're Here For You, um, if I'm playing acoustic and singing it, um, because it's got that acoustic-y, yeah. like, I don't want to say folk. That's not the right necessarily the right thing. That's I, a Jeremy I, Riddle one that we were yeah, doing. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of stuff like that. Um, I... <clears throat> Yeah, if I'm just being selfish with musically, it's gonna it's gonna have to be song. I mean, uh, I think one of the funnest songs to play, like on drums, uh, yeah, um, heaven come, come down, heaven come mm-hmm. down, like 
Like when you're playing it with a tight band, like it's just it, there's a lot of syncopation and stuff like that, and it works well with the lyrics. Um, so there's fun songs yeah. like that from a band perspective to play. Yeah, I, I was so, literally just curious. For me, it would be "Who Is Like the Lord." And you get to those bridge hits. Doo, doo, doo. It's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, next question. Let's move on. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if Hillsong, Bethel, and Elevation only had mediocre songs, do you think they look different? Not in terms of the size, but in beliefs and teachings. Do you worry that if Northwood music got big, that it may no. in some way? <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry about that one. You can't get big when you I don't do nothing. We don't have three thousand songs in us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if Northwood worship gets big? It won't. Don't it worry. Won't, don't worry. We'll always be small, <laughs> and we'll fight to be small. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It takes a lot of work to be this small. <laughs> I don't want the microscope. Yeah. So no, if, if it got big, do you think it would influence the direction of the church? Um, I, I don't think it would. I can't really speak to, to other churches. And I'll be honest, like Hillsong Bethel Elevation, in terms of their beliefs and teachings, I don't think I've listened to a full sermon from any of those churches. Yeah, I So agree. I can't really rip it. I know a lot of people do, and I'm not saying that you can't or you shouldn't, but I can't because I haven't listened to a lot. I've heard some clips that sound crazy. I've heard some clips that sound really, really good. It's not my church, and so I don't really... I don't really care what those pastors have to say because they're not my pastors. So yeah, I, I think um, any time that there's more people um, communicating vision of of a local expre- of a, of a church, like in worship, the people that are writing the songs are communicating vision or heart of the church in a lot of ways. Um, so I don't know if that is in, that influences that question. I'm thinking about some of those churches, and I know like their lead pastors are really focused on being in on the songwriting sessions because they want to make sure it stays connected to the, they want to make sure the worship extension of their church is the same as their church itself. So, so some of the songs that you hear are actually, you know, in agreement with the vision or, or, or biblical interpretation. So, you know, there might be tools in place that people put, put in place to, to try to avoid that type of stuff. But I, I think it's kind of impossible to say without, going there i don't know hillsong <clears throat> years ago i know that they for sure had a, a like they have like a team of theologians <clears throat> on staff uh to help with i don't know i guess their sermons i'm not sure about the sermon part of things but i know with their music um they would submit their songs to these guys and they would say oh, okay that's that's good that's not good and you know with hillsong <clears throat> for me i don't know that i've ever had a moment with a hillsong song that I felt that was potentially off or theologically incorrect, me personally. Um, I'm just talking about the, the music right now. Um, elevation, similar. There's been some things, you know. I'm like, play it well, safe. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bethel, I've had things for yeah. sure that I'm like, mm. yeah, a little, a little mystical on that one, mystical. and can't, can't really go that, that That's mystically, weird. you know. And so. Uh, <clears throat> As far as it affecting the the music affecting the church, I mean, it's kind of a hypothetical. That's like I don't yeah. really know it's helpful, but um, I don't think that the music has affected those churches theologically. Um, yeah, I, I I don't. It's a much bigger conversation yeah. about yep. what the guys preach mm-hmm. and their take on things. Um, and that informing some of the music that's produced. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, right. yeah, potentially. If I anything, think it's, it's the opposite. It's a, it's probably a mirror. Yeah. It's a mirror of what's taking place in that church. Yeah. <laughs> Next question: What decides when a song gets put on the back burner? Hymns get sung for decades, but Good Good Father goes hard for a few months and then goes away forever. I don't know why songs go away. I think it's all style. Like we're not going to sing the same songs forever, and that's okay. Why do certain songs in the top forty hit really hard for a little bit and go away, and other ones you sing them forty years later? Yeah. Who knows? Nobody knows. Songs, if we knew, yeah. we could write. All of them. Bunch of the top 40 songs. <laughs> okay, I got a news story. Man arrested for running illegal dental operation in a Danbury hotel room. <laughs> a man is facing charges after police say he illegally practiced dental work in a Danbury hotel room. Danbury police said officers responded to the La Quinta Hotel report. Of course, of it had to be La Quinta. It's gotta be. <laughs> the, the officers found a man who was said he was conducting dental referrals, police said. When officers entered the occupant's room, they found an impromptu operating set with dental drills, suction machines, and a portable x ray machine. Bottles of amoxicillin and other medications were also found, said police. Authorities said 
While officers spoke to the suspect, a man left the room with a cause in his mouth. He told police he had just had dental procedure done. <laughs> Ugo uh, de Lima was arrested and charged with practicing dentistry without a license and an illegal sale of prescription drugs. How do you find I mean, out about a guy to get dental work done? You got to be illegally? really bad at Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a lot of questions. I mean, one part of me says kudos to the dentist for setting up an office. I mean, he did it. <laughs> no one said he was a dentist. Living yeah. the American How do you dream. find him? How do you do that? Uh, who has the courage to go to yeah. a dentist office at La Quinta? Yeah, that's... What were his rates? I, mean, I need I guess, some work. Yeah, yeah. So, like, <laughs> if you if you need a filling done, and he's like, I'll do it for 50 bucks. Yeah. And if you go without an insurance, it's going to cost you, like, yeah. 300 Yeah. Right? You're just like, hey, man. People go to Mexico all the time for yeah. other surgeries that cost 75% less. Yeah, so... Where was this at? La Quinta, but where is this? I think it was in somewhere in Florida. Okay. Wow. Uh, there was a comment that says, one of the best kidney transplants I ever had happened <laughs> at a Best Western in Topeka, Kansas. <laughs> Shout out to you, Micah. <laughs> A kidney transplant. <laughs> Woke up in a bathtub <laughs> so stay in the ice for a little bit. <laughs> that reminds me of like uh, these videos I've been watching lately on uh, Stolen Valor. These guys who oh, dress man. up like they're oh, military man. personnel. I love Stolen Valor. And then Valor. people like catch them Oof. and they go up to them and they're just videoing them. Yeah. They're like, hey, thank you for your service. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, hey, so where'd you serve? And it's like, oh, you know, like, over here. And they're like, where'd you get commissioned at? Uh, and they say something completely wrong, and then they say something like, "Say they're dressed in the Navy." Mm -hmm. They'll say something that's like Air Force, dude. It's so cringe. Yeah. It's so cringe to watch these guys just get exposed. And one guy went to a funeral home. He went to a funeral Oof. dressed. I'm talking to the nines, oh. and it was the 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 jacket was a little baggy, and he had all of these like all these ribbons and uh, medals, and and dude, he was like a. It's like a some sort of general. I don't know. It, it was way ranked way up as far as all his stuff was concerned, and these guys knew he wasn't it. And so <laughs> he they started like grilling him. Korean official. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, he just walked away and, and talked trash while he's walking away. Jeez. And dude, just super weird. Anyway. Stuff. I have a fun story about that. So a couple of buddies we went out shooting shooting guns one day, and went to a gas station to to get uh, drinks or whatever. And a Navy friend in Lennon saw like some camo pants or whatever, so it looked like he was in the military. And so he walks up to pay, and I, as I'm walking, I'm like, Stolen Valor! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and there was nobody in the store, so okay. it, didn't, it didn't matter at all. Yeah. But I was, thought you were going to say they offered him a military discount. No, or it was still yeah. fun to see him cringe and try yeah. to cover it up. I'm not, I'm not, I swear! Normally yeah. he's in buckle jeans and boots. With the jewels on the butt? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Rob. Same guy. <laughs> uh, I, got, I got a new story. I just So I find it so intriguing it's just it's it's intriguing to me and like in a, in a curious curious sense but also like an angering sense how much momentum this whole the whole trans movement has like it's yeah. just it's I agree and like drag queens with kids and stuff like that it just it's really intriguing to me and so um I had this conversation a few years ago on through a Facebook message with somebody <clears throat> about about this whole idea that uh you know I say the government very loosely but like whoever they is right like they are seeking to remove um, uh, parental rights from parents for kids and to basically usurp any sort of authority that you have in raising your kids. And, uh, and we've had a lot of conversations yeah. about that. And, and I posted a video from an NBC uh, clip that went out years ago. Like I'm talking 10 years ago about this. And they were talking about how, you know, children are not their parents parents possessions basically hmm. but they're all of our kids the collective the collective yeah collective parenting and all this kind of stuff and i and what i said was like you know yeah this is completely off base and blah 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 and this person was like you know no i think you're just reading into it and you're doing that. i'm like no i'm not mm -mm. what they're saying is actually happening and and i had at, at that point there wasn't a lot of momentum around it it was more like you, yeah. you heard hints of it yeah and now a Senate bill would allow transgender medical procedures for minors without parental consent in, uh, <clears throat> in Washington. Lawmakers are considering a bill in Washington state that would remove parents' ability to intervene in their children's medical care in certain circumstances. Repents, uh, uh, reports that Senate Bill 5599, supporting youth and young adults seeking uh, protected health care services, has recently passed the House, paving the way for Governor Jay Inslee's approval. The bill reportedly allows 
host homes for runaway youth to yep. house them without parental permission. Yep. And not having to report. No, yeah. yeah. Furthermore, wow. the host homes would not need to notify parents yeah. about where their kids are or if they are getting medical interventions if there is a compelling reason not to, which includes a youth seeking protected health services. And it goes on. Uh, Tana, Tana, Sin, Sin, I don't know who this person is, but anyway, she showed her support for the bill after it passed the House. This is what she said. I am saying tonight to them that I see you, I affirm you, that I hear you, that I love you. And it's all the language that you hear mm -hmm. around this with kids is like, we're for you, we're, yep. we're trying to help you. And like, <clears throat> even, but it's all in separating the kids from, from the, the parents because the parents are, you know, not progressing and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're actually oppressive on the yep. kids. And it's just, it's so crazy to see that happening in such a main, um, uh, in such a, a mainline way. Yeah. But it's so obvious that it's jacked up. It's getting buried in certain conversations where, where there's a rebuttal, like what we're talking about right here, where, oh, this is wrong. And it's the argument saying, well, no, this isn't, that's not exactly what it means. It's always that kind of, of course. that's not what it means. Yeah. It's about the, the, the kids that uh, are physically being abused, locked up in cages at their right, house because right. of the way that they act. We're trying to protect them. Mm -hmm. But that is not what that bill is actually doing. That is opening up something that, okay, it could provide protection for them. Yes. But the other 99% of young people that are struggling or questioning or all of that, this opens up a whole nother arena of decision-making that could potentially have catastrophic effect on, on right. them, on families, on society even. Um, so it's, it's all about the minority voice that is becoming the loudest, the most influential that's affecting the majority at this point. That's the frustrating part for me is we're doing it all under the name of healthcare. Mm -hmm. It's the yep. same thing with abortions, the same thing. It's like, oh, we're yeah. denying these people healthcare. Like, no, that's not healthcare. Well, it goes back to defining what this, uh, the, it's the moral, the moral stance, you know, yeah, right. where does life begin? Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, if you believe that g gender dysphoria is an actual condition, rather than somebody that's struggling with their gender being um, valid and needing to go to get a procedure done mm -hmm. in order to yep. fix that rather than get treatment or therapy or or learn how to live, you know, with this. And, of course, we've already talked about gender yeah. expression yep. and all that a couple of weeks ago. No need to go there right now. Um, and, and actually help them understand, like, it's okay if you're a guy and you have some feminine characteristics about you. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're, you, you are a a woman, you know, or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. let's not, we don't have to go there. Let's talk about where they're at and, and affirm w how yeah. they are, how they are actually made and, and all that kind of stuff, but not read having to change definitions. Yeah. And anyway, so then <clears throat> tap, uh, tacking on top of that procedures and then making it to where if I know that my kid is struggling in an area and they know that they can run away yep. and go yep. and hide from me, and if I go to try to find them or whatever, I could end up being the one that if like yeah. what happens if I do find out where they are, I that you know there's mm -hmm. a tracker on their phone or whatever, right? And I find I go there, am I gonna be That's able to abuse. take my 13 sure. year old back home with me, or mm -hmm. am I in like somehow some way kidnapping them? Yeah. Could I get charged with kidnapping? Like yeah. it That's opens what up happened scenario. to that, that father and daughter in Canada, Canada yep. right? Yeah, they always say we're about what, five, five, ten years behind Canada, then behind Europe. So it's like, man, it's hap it happened in Canada. Everyone's like, no, no, it'll never, never ha happen here. Never happened in America. We have American values. We have uh, Senate, House, all that it can stop all that. Which I, I, I believe in that. I believe in government. Um, but whenever they push down the pipe to communicate specifically to a whole younger generation, uh, they're able to pit one younger generation against the older generation. Absolutely. Right? And then they rise up and they say, actually, you guys had it completely wrong. It's about us and having our own ideas and we're going to do it right. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is for a long time, young people are always so passionate. And I love young people for this. Do Passionate. We want to change the world. Yes. But as you get older, sh you should... Um, ask older people like, man, how do we actually do what we actually want to do? We're passionate about the subject. Uh, how do we actually apply it? Um, what we're seeing now is young people actually just say, hey, we're not going to ask any advice. We're just going to go for it and we're going to do it ourselves. And it's like, man, we're, we're seeing the ramifications of all that right now.
Anyway, that was kind of like uh, that was kind of one of those random news stories that popped up, and I was like, "Dude, look at this, man! Look at this sermon review." We talked about church and how it, it matters. It was Question, so good. Question mark. Church part one. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing we're doing two different sermons on the church. Uh, this past week was part one, and part two will be like May seventh, I think it is. And uh, this first week was on what is the church. Uh, who is the church and what is the order of the church? And so um, I know in Gulfport, I went really long. Um, like How really long, long did you go, dude, Pastor Jordan? <laughs> like super long. I, I knew going into it, I was like, there's no way that this is going to go quick. It was one of those messages where, um, and it happens every now and then, you know, where it's like. This is a four week message. It really is. It's yeah. like, mm-hmm. this is a whole series and we're we're going to just try to say a lot in one day. And, and so anyway. um. Even with it being long, though, I think everybody was pretty much locked in because it's, it's, it's who we are, man. It's like, what are we doing? Uh, you know, how does this operate? And so, what is the church? Uh, talked a little bit about how, where the church started in Acts chapter two, and kind of the use of the word church. Who is the church? You know, super important in regards to like who is the who is the actual church, and it's those who have their faith in Jesus. Um, you know, going to a church is one part of being the church kind of, but in regards to the spiritual community of believers, that's only accessed through faith in Jesus, you know, um, and it's a spiritual thing. It's not a letter, you know, that you move a letter from a church to church or whatever. It's, Mm -hmm. it's way deeper than that. And so, uh, so we talked about that for a while. Then we, we did, we got into the conversation of the order of the church, uh, which speaks of the submission in church uh, submission to christ uh submission to the scripture and then submission to church leaders yeah uh which is probably i think i don't think anybody has a problem with pretty much anything until you start talking about who leads the church yeah. and how the church is led i think i mean you know what i'm saying I, yeah. I think everybody unless you're having a theological conversation about scripture and an yeah, interpretation that's a of scripture, sure. but overall, people are gonna be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, of course, the Bible," and but when God, you get to, yes. yeah, when you get to like who's who's in charge, yep. you know, because that's how people look at it. Um, I think that's where the conversation would happen, uh, and where the misunderstandings can happen, and where the awkwardness can happen, <laughs> yeah. where, where all of it happens yeah. is who's 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 leading the church. Jesus is leading the church. Yes, and also the scriptures have a lot to say about yeah. people who are leading the church, who God puts into place, or hopefully yeah. <laughs> God puts into place to lead lead the church. And um, a church, an individual like local church, but ultimately the global church. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I was in Long Beach. I didn't teach. Pastor Casey did. And uh, as he was talking about the submission to leaders. Uh, he just, he said it and he said, this is the one he's like, this is the one that that's tough for us to hear. Yeah. Like, and he said, it's just because of everything that it brings something I do appreciate about how he presented it even, which we did it at all locations was he talked about the responsibility that that leader, uh, carried with it. Um, not just, not just with God, but, um, the, this is a big deal for that person. It's, it's, it, the way I heard it, and maybe it was just because I'm, I'm a church leader, was, hey, it's not just heard, uh, it's not just hard to be under leadership. A lot of times, it's hard to be a leadership, and this is a cooperation, but it's, it's a relationship. Yeah. Um, and it's working together, it's loving each yeah. other, it's being forgiving, but also knowing that there is, there is, um, a, a high level of of responsibility that that church leader has. Uh, I know one of our one of our pastors. Uh, read the scripture, and uh, I think it's in Wiggins, and he said, so I just want to talk to you, church, right now. He said, thank you guys for letting me lead you. He says, thank you for respecting this. Thank you for making that. I think he said, thank you for making this easy. And uh, it was just a sweet moment. I think how we hear that oftentimes is interpreted by the way that we've um, experienced that in our entire life. And uh, so I, I was I was appreciative that it was handled with with tenderness. Again, very few people have a problem with saying I need to surrender or submit to the word. Um, and very few people have a difficulty saying I need to submit to God. It does come when it's person to person. It's the person I see. So, 
Um, at least that was that part. Anybody else on that section? Yeah, I think that was that was the big point of the day. Uh, and I like how we kind of framed it up all in like unity as well. It's like we all got to have unity and peace for for each other and give people the benefit of the doubt. I think it's a big deal. Like you got to trust your pastor, and hopefully you do. If you don't, then find a church where you can trust the people who are leading it yeah. and know that they're going to mess up. And like that's okay. You're going to mess up too. Like it's yeah. not just your church leader who's making a mistake. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes too. And having that grace for each other to be like, all right, let's let's keep running. Like it's okay. Don't jump out of the ship. Like we're fine. Let's keep going. Yeah, I try to think about like, man, what my life looks like and how much um, I can fail and how I even just try to lead my home. And I'm like, man, that's such a big responsibility that you guys have to be able to help lead other people and guide other people. And it's like, man, like, let me try to manage what I'm doing before I would even try to judge how someone else is managing anything else. Yeah. So that's kind of the approach I take when I look at like church leadership. Yeah, and I say this this gonna might come across negative, the whole like armchair quarterback scenario with armchair pastors, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And um we all do that to some extent. So yeah, if I am watching, you know, a news program and they're talking about let's say it's politics or let's say it's anything, you know, I'm like, Well, they ought to do this. <laughs> we all do that, you know what I'm saying, to some we degree do. or another. Um but it's like if I was in those shoes, what if I would have done the same thing because I would have known all of the, the things that nobody knows yep. and I would have actually came to the same conclusion. And it's like, oh, man, now other people are say- be-, be saying that about me. <laughs> exactly. And, and that scenario, it does, it, it kind of humbles you and you're like, man, let me not be so quick to judge and, and to assume the worst of a decision or a whatever. Yeah. But I think typically – in our culture, when people talk about church leadership nowadays, it is from a negative standpoint. It's like, it's like, oh, let's talk about all the bad things. But it's like, can we have a conversation about ever about good church leadership? Yep. Like <laughs> all the good things sure. that are and have gone on and that are going on. I don't know. I, I feel like there's such a focus all the time on. If you say submission to authority, submission to church leaders, it's an automatic defense mechanism that comes up rather than a, you know what, uh, there's a there's more good pastors out there than there are bad ones. Yeah. And even the ones that some people say are bad are not actually bad. It's just the way that they've come to that conclusion that they are bad. And it's like, if you knew the whole story, you would realize they aren't bad. Yeah. You know, um, there's a lot of great pastors. There's yep. a lot of great church leaders and um, that are doing their best to serve people. I think there's a lot of negative conversations around these things, but there's there should be, I think, positive conversations yeah. uh, about uh, like stories and stuff of, of good leadership. Um, I, I feel that across the board about the church right now, not Northwood, the church, Yeah. Um, that it's just, man, there's, there's ultra criticism, and I get it why. I understand why it's merited. But, yeah. And I'm not, by the way, we, we put out a clip and somebody said something that when I, when I'm talking about criticism, I'm not talking about criticism from the world. Mm. I'm not talking about the world criticizing the church. Yeah. I'm talking about the Christians criticizing the church. Yeah, That's what I'm talking about. When I talk about criticism, I expect people who don't love God to hate the bride of Christ. <laughs> yeah. Like, hopefully, sure. hopefully they do. That, that's yeah. going to be the way that it is. Um, uh, Jesus said that, but it's whenever the bride of Christ is turning on itself, yeah. um, it people are not thinking about the long term results of yeah. that and their own children. By the way, um, a lot of people are going to regret some of the things that they say and they they do against the bride, uh, the 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 big C church, and they think they're just talking about a certain sect of it. Yeah. They don't understand that in their kids' eyes yeah. as they grow up, that that cynicism. And that criticism around that one, it's going to spread to all of it because every single expression of the bride has a flaw in it, and you're not going to be able to pick and choose which one. You're just yep. going to have to throw it all out. Yep. So what's going to happen? It's what's happening already in yeah, our country. Man. So, yeah. you know, it's not like a, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's what takes place. Yep. And uh, it's what's happening with our our, our country. Yep. It's like our country is built on this, this, and this, and so throw the whole thing out. Well, no, we're shooting holes in the boat that we're all standing in. Yeah. Yep. And we're all going to regret that, yep. you know? Uh, so anyway, 
I think it's like, man, yeah, this happened. Yeah, this happened. Yeah, let's fix it. Let's let's work on that. However, overall, man, the boat's still good. I'm telling you, dude, it's I'm a good you. boat. Yeah. And so let's talk about let's accentuate some positives. Yeah. Love it. You know, there there's great pastors, there's great church leaders who are doing a great job. Yep. By the way, there's also church leaders who maybe have not done a good job in certain areas who have repented and changed. Can we talk about that a little yeah. bit, maybe? There, there, there's, you know, who, who are responding to maybe some, the ways that they were raised up that wasn't the best, right? It wasn't proper and they're changing, there's repentance and there's, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's celebrate the progression, proper progression in it and not just burn the ships, you know, in a negative way. And um, absolutely, man, you know, celebrate. Well, mm. uh, you see, we got some little Debbie's on the table. Mm. It has come time to rank them. Yep, and place them in their proper order. Debbie is here. Yeah, we've and been, heard a bunch of people's feelings. Yeah, we've been in a lot of conversations about this. This was a very commented clip on where we yeah. talked about little Debbies and it's a big deal. These are a lot of your favorites. I'm not saying they're ours. Um, we've got I don't even know what You're all these find calls. out. So we got some Nutty Buddy bars right here. Nutty Buddies. Okay, and then we have the old zebra, uh, zebra mm, cakes, zebra right cakes, there. aka Christmas trees repackaged. It's true. Or the That's true. Around. Then we got the old cosmic brownie. I forgot those were a thing. I know until mm. I remembered those are a thing. And then we have the uh, the old oatmeal cream pie. No, that's a star, a star crunch. crunch. You can't see. My eyes are bad. <laughs> wow, you can't crunch. see. I literally. Oh yeah, my eyes are terrible. Can I can see, see now. Difference? I can see now. Oh, okay. I just couldn't see the oatmeal. I couldn't see what was on the other end, and so I just took a guess. Circle. Now seeing the oatmeal cream pie, I can tell. Who cares? Someone Swiss else roll. talk then. Someone else do this. Yeah, the, the Swiss, Swiss rolls. rolls. Yeah. Nicely packaged, two and one. And package. the star crunch at the end. <laughs> well played. So we have to agree to be non-biased, like no preconceived ideas here. Yeah. This is just based. Are we? How are we going to do this? Are we going to taste them and give them like one to ten, or are we just going to afterwards just say this is number one? How many two. do we have? Five, six, six. Let's just put them in their their proper All order right. here. Brent, are you eating? <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> what are we doing? Come on, here? bro. Are we doing nutty buddy first. Yeah, nutty buddy uh, first, since that's what Brent took a bite of. Way to go, Brent. I enjoy Nutty Buddy Bar, man. I forgot I about how good these years. are. This is pretty good. <laughs> this is going to be bad. It's quality. This is number one so far. This is my favorite so far, yeah. <laughs> Zebra? I haven't had one of these probably in 20 years. I'm not I'm not lying. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going for the scent This first. is definitely at least high school. Zebra yeah, Visually, they're probably the best visual snack. They also make Swiss rolls that are zebra cake. It's not doing it for me. I enjoy it. Nope. Bland. Too soft. Whoops. Very sweet. It tastes like a cake from Walmart. Cosmic Ugh. brownie. Yeah, I'm glad you got the big chunk. Dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we worked that nicely. I know what this tastes like. I eat these. My girls like get them. That's worse than the, the zebra cake for me. That's gross. It is pretty bad. <laughs> it's waxy. <laughs> Dude, I was like, I, like I was trying to cheer for it because your family eats them. Yeah, I was like, man, that ain't. <laughs> That's, that's number three so yeah. far. I was like, yo. The There's crunch. a chemical taste about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It's bad. Yeah, All right, Star good. Crunch. It's not good. Star Crunch. I don't even know what this tastes like. Like, I don't Dude, even, these like, were these were my jam back in the day. It's not good. I don't hate that one. Is that nougat? <laughs> Is that nougat? <laughs> no, brother. That's just chocolate and sugar. <laughs> 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 you ain't getting any. I'm not mad at the texture. Yeah, the flavor like, is lacking. The old Swiss roll. So you can't go wrong with the Swiss roll. Yeah. Honestly. We're about to find out. That's good. It's like a zebra cake to me. Quality content no. here. Nah, this is better than a zebra cake. It's Same just, kind of texture. Same thing to me. It tastes similar. I, I agree, but I, I like both. So I like chocolate better. All right. I don't know what. Yeah, I mean, taste the chocolate. I, vanilla. I do taste chocolate. I enjoy vanilla. There's more that cream tastes... in that one than the zebra cake. Mm -hmm. All right. And then OCP. Oh, man. OCP. You down with OCP? I'm telling you guys. Nobody's going to go with that one? You OCP? With those? Yeah, you know me. All right, OCP. Mm -hmm. Man, the texture. All right, I forgot how good. <laughs> That's the first time I've had Dude. one of those in a very long time, and I, I forgot how good that is. Dude. I'll say it, yep. Oh, shit. These are good. Dude, we didn't get honey buns, did we? No, we didn't. Damn, mm. that's the biggest way better about organizing than we are. Dude, who bought the? Who didn't get honey buns? No. Get them out, dude. Uh, get out of here. Hey, you're fired. Yeah. So this is a good spot for people to put their comments in if they haven't part participated in little Debbie contests or yeah. thoughts. But I don't know how we're gonna do this. I'll just say mine. 
Um, the worst one by far was the Cosmic Brownie. I agree. Um, that was for me. That's number six. Um, then it was the zebra cake. Um, then for me, it was the Swiss roll. Then the star crunch got the bronze medal. Dude, star crunch. Uh -huh. That's crazy. Then the nutty, uh, nutty buddy, nutty buddy bar in two. And then it'll, in a landslide victory, the OCP takes the crown for me. Any objections, Brent? I wouldn't say landslide. Because man, I forgot how good those Nutty Buddies were. Mm -hmm. I'm Classic. also a big peanut butter fan. So yeah, peanut that, butter. It's, that, it's the peanut butter. Was, yeah. And also the crisp. I, I like the crispy crisp, things. The wafer. Yeah, wafer. Yeah. It was a good. Yeah. The yeah. ratio was right. I agree. They did a good job on that one. <laughs> so, are you saying it's better than OCP? I, I like, but I like oatmeal a lot. I'm telling and you to make I, a decision, man. Mm. Nutty Buddy. Gets the win. Nutty Buddy gets the win. It's the oh, win. The peanut man. butter wins. Oh, okay. Peanut butter wins. Wow. wow. Okay. Wow. <sighs> Okay. The other ones, yeah, they're they're trash. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I used to like Swiss rolls. They're not good. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've I do recently, like chocolate. Chocolate's good. I've killed the Swiss rolls, but something changed about two to three months ago where mm. it, it was like, ah, man, I'm just like it's too much. It's just too sweet, I, and so I started only eating one. And then the other one would get stale, and and then all of a sudden, <laughs> honestly, we were talking about oatmeal pies the other day when yeah. we first talked about it, and I was like, hmm. And we got them. That's what I've been eating. Yeah, it's good, man. Yeah. So, which what's your winner? Yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to agree. Um, you know, down the bottom three, I, I could kind of move those around a little bit, and I would probably swap the Star Crunch for the Swiss Roll. Okay. You know, put Swiss mm -hmm. Roll in the top top three, but I would have to agree, man. The the Nutty Buddies are good. It's a little bit too sweet for me. I like peanut butter and I like the wafer, but it's a little bit like. Like after about three bites, I'm like, geez. Yeah. Ah. I can't that's imagine true. eating two of those. Two yeah, of those I wouldn't eat two. Yeah, there's it's two. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So that that, true. that's the one thing about it. The oatmeal pie, though, it's not too sweet. Yeah. And, but it's better. It's got better taste than like the zebra cake. Zebra cake didn't, wasn't too Dude, sweet, was in my opinion. It was just didn't taste good. It was boring. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. So, um, no, I, I'm actually, I'm the same, man. Right now, do that oatmeal cream pie gets the, it, it wins. It was good. I, I think I'm going to have to go with Brent. On the Nutty Buddy Bunch. Oh, it was boy. Good. Top. It was good, boy, man. Boy, wow. boy. Dude, it's good. Joel tapped into his four-year-old boy. I did, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had flashbacks yeah. fighting with all my brothers. Over it was sweet. <laughs> Nostalgic. So how do we uh, how do we determine the actual dude. winner? It's, it's a tie. Dude. Oh, snap. It is. It is. Unless, unless we literally re rely on the comments and let them determine it. Mm. Like somebody comment OCP. Somebody comment. NB. NB. Make sure we don't. Do anything is there anything wrong, wrong with MB? <laughs> That's literally, I was like, is this appropriate? Are our fact checkers look that up? Yeah. <laughs> is our acronym going to get canceled? <laughs> <Okay>. I'm sure. <laughs> or just comment. Let us know. That's yeah. that's our opinion. Oatmeal, cream pies, OCPs, or Nutty Buddies. Nutty Buddy Bars. Nutty, nutty Buddy Bars. bars. NDB. 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 Yeah. We did forget a big hitter in the in the chat was the, the honey, buns. honey Buns. Okay, so we'll have to do the Honey Buns versus the winner. Yeah, I'm good with that. Hey, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's smart. So right. comment the winner. Comment the winner, comment and the winner. then it will come up against the Honey Bun. <laughs> that's it.